Hi Scorpio, it's Gregory Scott here. This is your astrology for November 2015. Thanks for joining me. You start November with a bang because there's a grand trine in water in your chart. You're a water sign, so you're going to feel very much literally in your element and you'll be getting lots of intuitive messages. You'll feel in control of your emotions and you'll feel like what you're saying, the way you behave, the way you connect with other people and your knowledge and your skills are valued and that you have an impact on the lives of other people. So you're going to feel very much at peace with yourself and with the world and with your environment at the beginning of the month. And that strengthens because Mercury, the planet of communication, moves into your sign of Scorpio on the 2nd of November and it sits in your first house. So What's going to be central to you this month is your ability to communicate. That's information going out and information coming in. You're going to feel like you're at the switchboard and you have your finger on the pulse and you know everything that's going on. That feeling of connectedness will strengthen even more on the 3rd of November because the sun, which is in Scorpio, happy birthday, is going to start connecting with Neptune, the planet of water and the intuition and dreams, on the 3rd of November and it stays connected to that planet until the 6th of November. So whenever the Sun and Neptune form a connection your intuition really skyrockets and gets much stronger. So 1st to 6th of November you really will get huge amounts of intuitive information. You'll get um, insight, you'll have dreams, you'll have messages come through and you'll just know things. Particularly in your romantic life it's going to be very hard to um, misinform you because you'll have an innate sense of knowing. On the 4th of November the moon starts to trine Uranus and your moon is currently in Leo in your 10th house so you feel like you're really really on the right track doing what you're doing in your working life. You'll feel like you can really express yourself, you can really shine and when you um, take charge and when you take the lead you can really move forward and have great success and achievement. So Scorpio, for you, you feel very much in charge and you feel very much in control at the beginning of November. On the 5th of November, Jupiter um, and Pluto have a really strong connection on this day. They have been in a trine connection since the 8th of September and they will continue with that connection until the 20th of November. The 5th and 6th of November, specifically are very very strong though with that connection. Now Jupiter is in Virgo in your 11th house of hopes and dreams okay and what that means is when you take practical action to realize your hopes and dreams and it connects with Pluto new life is breathed into those hopes and dreams and they become a reality in a practical sense particularly when you communicate to make them happen and you work at making them happen. You've got a lot of stuff going on in that 11th house of hopes and dreams. You've got the North Node, you've got Venus, you've got Mars, Jupiter, and the Moon. So the biggest focus is on creation, on realizing yourself, on bringing about what you've got in here and making it a reality, okay? So if you're a janitor but you're a movie star in here, then how are you going to get from here to bringing that into the outside world and making it a reality? That's really the question, and it's kind of like the... Um, the caterpillar coming out of the cocoon to be that butterfly and that's the process you're going through. So it's a period of blossoming of becoming your real self and you're so empowered by that Mercury Sun in Midheaven in your first house they will give you the strength and the energy to make that a reality. If you've got a dream the beginning of November is the best time to make it happen. There's a Yod on the 7th of November and a Yod is also known as the Finger of God. It's two quincuxes and a sextile and it's really a, kind of a karmic influence or an outside energy that intervenes. And this touches again on that ability to become who you want to be specifically in your working life. And the way to do that is by being unconventional and being and taking action. So you're going to have to be brave if you've got a dream to be something and you're going to have to own it and go out there and actually take action to do it. That can be quite tricky, you know. If I'm, um, if I live in a small town 
um, but I want to be, you know, a burlesque performer or something, and that's my dream. I'm going to have to be brave and do that because people are going to start talking. And if I'm uncomfortable with that, then that's something I'm going to have to, you know, deal with in some way and find a way to deal with it. Um, but again, I mean, I talk about this a lot, you know, and you don't have desires within you or dreams to achieve something unless there's some reason or purpose for it. If you do want to be a performer or something like that, then you're meant to do that. There's, there's a reason for it because um, you don't just get given desires willy-nilly and for no reason. There's a point to it. So please have the strength and courage to follow that pursuit, that dream and to pursue it. And I see that at the beginning of November, you will have that sense of power and control of your own life that you can do what you want to do. Now, on the 8th of November, that sense of drive and power will hit and will meet um, considerations of your relationships with other people. But really, the way to focus on that is not to project into the future and to think, what will people think of me and to do their thinking for them. The, the, the way to go ahead is to just focus on the work and to focus on what you can do on a practical level and how you can put that into place and take action on it. Venus goes into Libra on the 9th of November and Venus goes into your 12th house. Now, that really, that really um, kind of works against you a little bit because Venus in Libra is very much about creating beauty and harmony and also being very considerate of other people. And what you've been doing so far this month is being uh, focusing on yourself and how you can take charge and make yourself be more you. So rather than go up against people and have that Venus just detract from you, use the Venus energy to see how can I make this the most beautiful version of what it's going to be. So if I'm, um, if I, my desire is to be a farmer or to be a painter, then have a think about what, what, how can I create the most beautiful pictures ever? Or how can I create a farm that's going to be so picturesque that I'm going to love every day that I just walk into it? That's the way to use Venus and to empower that Venus for yourself. Neptune begins to trine the moon on the 10th. Neptune's in your fifth. Oh, and this is good because the moon is in Scorpio on the 10th. It's in your first house of self. You feel very, very comfortable. That Neptune trining it gives you the answers to your problems, basically, via your direct communication with spirit, with the universe, with the source of all things, which has all the answers and which also knows why you want to do certain things. So meditate, connect, however you connect whether it's by looking into a crystal ball or by going swimming or by walking in nature or by using tarot cards or praying, meditating, doing yoga, whatever it is. Do that on the 10th because it's really going to give you the answers that you need. The day after is the full moon. No, it isn't. It's the new moon, okay? And the new moon is in your sign of Scorpio. So again, think of yourself as a, um, think of yourself as a uh, magnet. And what you attract is universal energy. On the 11th, everything in the universe that empowers you is going to be sucked into you and it's going to make you feel so strong and it's going to communicate to you what you ought to be doing for work and you'll be able to translate that into what you want to do in future. It doesn't need to be work in terms of a career. It can be how do I want to express myself? What's my life purpose? How do I do something, create something, engage with something to make meaning in my life? That new moon is all about control as well. How do I control my life? How do I control the way I feel about my life? How do I make more sense of what I'm doing? And that will give you huge strength to really take all of that stuff and to tie it up nicely so that you're happy with where you're going. Jupiter sextiles the sun and um, connects with it on the 12th of November and Mercury is right next to the sun. <clears throat> so, again, this works the other way around. The communication that you get in will guide you in terms of what practical action to take, which will then energize you and allow you to take the action. So everything is about all systems go for you, Scorpio. I really think this is going to be 
I mean, I'm on the 12th of November now, so this is a hugely productive two weeks, and you can really, I don't know about you, but sometimes I'm not feeling quite right, and I have to do some work, and it takes me three hours, and sometimes I feel amazing, and it's just easy, and it takes me an hour. And you're going to have a month where things just click into place really nicely, and you can do them effortlessly. Mars goes into Libra on the 13th of November. That's in your 12th house as well. And what's going to happen here is that there's going to be a bit of a split in terms of me versus them. What do I want? What do other people want? And it may be that, you know, up until now, the, the, the dissent or the, the conflicting opinions or the other people's views have been a little buzz outside of your hearing, just at the corner of your, you know, hearing. And now it's starting to get a little bit louder and you're starting to have to take notice of that. What I would suggest is to focus on what can you do practically rather than what other people are thinking and saying. I don't know why that's coming through so interestingly for you. Right. You like to have people on board, don't you? You like to have um, say over the people in your life. I think you like to control kind of what you're exposed to. And the reason this is coming through so much is you have huge power this month to really change things. But because you have that huge power, you're, you're being faced with more resistance and you're exposed to more people than you usually would be and you're having more opposition. Now, the trick is to focus on your strength and not let that deter you. And that's a lesson for you because you can be successful even if other people don't support you. You don't need other people in your corner all the time. You don't need to be in charge of other people. You can just do what you want. Now your chart clears four houses on the 14th. They're just whoosh, empty. Nothing's going on there. The 7th, 8th, 9th, 10th houses are just empty. And that is the third quadrant, pretty much. And that third quadrant is all about you in connection with other people, especially in a public, in a public way. What you're focused on is yourself and with personal kind of domestic relationships. So on the 14th in particular, I wouldn't plan any major um, work changes or any kind of official changes, signing house contracts, signing up for a new uh, school course, university course, college course, whatever. I would focus on spirituality and I would focus on kind of getting that sense of strength going within. On the 16th, Jupiter trines the Moon and Pluto, which is in your third house. This is a wonderful day to receive a new communication, which will actually help you realize one of your dreams. So at the beginning of the month, you were kind of putting that into place. I think you might even get something back as soon as the 16th of November. If it's a, if it's a new job, if it's a different job, if it's a different way of doing something, I think you get a practical, you get practical feedback on the 16th, which represents a door opening and a new opportunity in your life, which you can use to progress. 17th of November, Uranus and Venus start to oppose each other and they do that until the 28th of November. Now, Uranus is in your sixth, forcing you to take action and to make changes in your working life. And Venus is in your 12th. This is a really good opposition for you because Uranus is a really big outer planet. It's a really grumpy, chaotic old man. And he kind of squishes that annoying little Venus, goddess of love in your 12th house, which is annoying for you in this sense this month because it detracts you from what you're trying to do. You're not trying to be everyone's best friend right now. You're trying to get something changed. And sometimes you can't take everyone's feelings into consideration. Otherwise, you'll never get anything done. Uranus saves you and just goes <laughs> and you can move on with what you're trying to achieve. That's there until the 28th of November. So that gives you another boost to kind of move forward. Okay, and the moon squares a lot of things in your first house and second house. And in brackets, I've put here re-evaluation. So what's going to happen is that... Um, 
your path has again strengthened in terms of the way you see yourself, in terms of the way you're moving forward, in terms of your, I'm saying in terms too much. So your path, your own vision of yourself has strengthened. Your own vision of where you're going financially has strengthened too. Another person comes in, especially from family, and looks to teach you what you ought to be doing. Thank goodness you've got that Uranus, which doesn't make you so receptive to that kind of thing. And you can keep it at bay a little bit. Because again, like I said, Scorpio, you're in control this month. You're in the driving seat. Um, and because of that, you're getting more opposition than usual. So it comes from all sides. It comes from that distant buzzing. So different people in your life, random people um, that I mentioned earlier. But it also comes from people in your family life who disagree. They usually do that because they care about you, but in this sector, in this situation on the 19th, I, I really get the feeling that someone's trying to educate you about the way things ought to be done. So, you know, no one likes unsolicited advice, especially when you already have a very clear purpose of what you're doing. Mercury goes into Sagittarius on the 21st, purpose strengthens, you will start to see the long-term direction that you're moving in, especially in terms of your money and your career. And um, Pluto and Venus start to connect in a square from the 22nd of November through until the 25th of November. Pluto is in your third house and opens up those new doors of opportunity through your connection in your working life. Yeah, through your communication in your working life opens new things up. And now that it squares Venus, which has made a big kind of impact on your chart all month, which is sitting in your 12th house in Libra, that's actually a very positive connection because um, it kind of opens the door in a way that's really harmonious and helpful to you. So I think you'll start to see a way, a better way forward. On the 22nd and this I'm tying this all of this up with you being someone who's doing something right now and it's not particularly fulfilling or you're not particularly happy and you've got some ideas of what you'd rather do between the 22nd and 25th of November a nice feasible appealing alternative starts to present itself The Moon and Jupiter, they start to quincux on the 23rd of November, which means they're 150 degrees apart. And that's interesting. The Moon is now in Aries on your descendant, what it is you're looking for. So you're very, very comfortable moving forward with what you want. Okay. I think you've, you've, you've grown, you've gone through this whole process through this month. You've kind of had to navigate your own way in terms of what is it that I want to achieve. And it's not, I don't think it's that you're clueless or that you're not clear on what you want but you've had barriers and obstacles in your way the the, the moon there on top of the descendant means that you're very clear on what you want jupiter again with its good luck provides you with the support that you need to take practical action this is again another great day to put things into place again in regard to one of your hopes and dreams of what you can achieve in your working life The full moon occurs on the 25th of October, November. <sighs> okay, 25th of November is the full moon in your seventh house in Taurus, okay? And um, this month, uh, the new moon was in your sign in Scorpio. The full moon is in Taurus in your seventh house. Both of those moons are very positive for you because they're all about control. You like to control emotional kind of things. Taurus likes to have control over financial things, money, houses, things like that. The full moon in Taurus means that you feel quite vindicated because you'll start to see some positive results to the actions that you've taken. And it will make you feel like you have control over your life because you're starting to see good outcomes to, what you've, to the effort that you've put in. So this month for you is going to be excellent because everything in it makes you feel more in charge and makes you feel stronger and makes you feel 
like you have more say in your own life. And that's a good thing. On the 27th, the North Node of the Moon and Jupiter, they start to come together in your 11th house of hopes and dreams and they square the Moon which is in the 8th house in Gemini. So the focus and the energy now shifts a little bit and you're able to start communicating with other people in a productive way and that actually helps and supports you and you can start to let your guard down a little bit and you will have more contact with people who can actually open things up for you. So opportunities will now arrive via other people whereas before it was all from you and within. Uranus opposes Mars and it does that from the 28th of November here until the 20th of December, so a long time. Mars is in your 12th house, pushing you to create harmony for other people. Uranus is in your 6th house, pushing you to make harmony happen in your own working life. The friction there, again, is overpowered by Uranus, I would say, although it does oppose Venus at the same time, so both of those little planets are kind of fighting against this big planet. And you're going to start to feel more distractions to do things for others instead of doing them for yourself. If you've done the bulk of the work, if you know November has been so good that you've been able to make the changes and you're now living the dream already, then you can be there for other people. If you're still having to put extra legwork into getting to where you want to go, then continue to kind of put that to the side a little bit and focus on your own needs. Either way, you have the choice. You're in control. You're in charge. The moon trines the sun and Saturn. Oh, and this is a nice ending for you this month. It's, it ends the way it started with the moon there um, making you a real, really happy in terms of the work that you're doing. Creating solidity and foundation in your working life and giving you um, a vision of how you're progressing, how you're moving forward and an idea for what the future holds and where you'd like to be. So this is really about you um, seeing what's on offer, what's coming up in future and taking action to get there. Well done. So I hope you found that useful. If you'd like a private reading with me then please get in touch via my website. It's gregoryscott.com. Click on the readings tab and you'll see the types of readings that I offer, astrology, tarot, and numerology. Um, please remember to subscribe to the channel and if you'd like to find me on Facebook, I'm there as well. It's facebook.com forward slash Gregory Scott 444. Have a wonderful November and I'll speak to you soon.